Thank you. Go ahead and start the recording. Oh, we've been recording the whole time. No, I know. I just started it. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just I just got a notification this time. Like somehow nice meeting I didn't. We, we bridged the gap from the, our prior meeting. <laughs> we've just been recording straight. All right. So I'm, I'll share my screen. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the Chaos University Academic uh, Working Group where we talk about things open source and academic related. Um, today's question, big question, is if you're feeling feeling recharged and motivated for 2024. <laughs> We get one no, <laughs> Richard. I'm sorry to sorry to see that. <laughs> That's a bummer. It's okay. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about railing against the capitalist system this year. <laughs> I'm always wow. Like that. <laughs> wow. It's uh... uh all right. Um so so again, we have David joining us. David, if you want to introduce yourself, that'd be cool. Hi, yeah. Um I just started last month as the director of the new OSPO at George Washington University. Um, 30 something years in industry as an evil defense contractor <laughs> doing computer science, uh, software engineering, keeping America data engineering, safe. keeping America safe. Um, I've always been a little bit of an outsider in that organism that system always fighting the the man um i finally am like gone to my true calling i think so i'm took a huge pay cut but super excited to be here um yeah and so far the community has been so welcoming um i'm i'm kind of like fan struck right now seeing richard because i've been listening to sustain um this podcast for the last <laughs> last two weeks and i'm really enjoying it so great work there thank you um yeah i'm just excited to push all things open and learn and yeah grow this community awesome it's well great. it's great to have Welcome. you here. and you know congratulations on the work at george washington as well thank you yeah uh well that's great uh good good group here today the minutes are in the chat so if you want to take a look at that, then somebody just kind of keep that going. Um, I just, this is our first meeting back in, in 2024. So I just kind of wanted to get things organized a little bit. And I spent some time kind of going through our minutes and our conversations over the last, you know, six months or a year to try to bring things together and, and talk about where we're at and talk about uh, kind of moving forward. Um, so I, I will say that we do have a podcast for the university open source work set for January 16th. So it's uh, Claire is going to be on it. Saeed is going to be on it. And then Allison is going to be joining us as well. So just to talk about just kind of a few different questions about um, open source in the university context. So I shared with, with them. I think we're all set to go. Um, and, and Zach from Stanford might be joining as well. I haven't heard back from him. So, uh, all right. So just keep you posted on that. Um, I was curious if if we, in 2024, if there would be any interest in having a, an in-person meetup uh, for kind of the group that's on this, this call. However, that might occur. It could occur independently, you know, um, it could occur as part of an open source uh, conference that is already there, um, but something where we really spend dedicated time just kind of getting together as a group, whether it's having dinner and drinks or talking about things uh, really specific to this group. So I'm curious what people's thoughts are. Richard? We've had a similar question um, in the academic working group, and I was wondering what conferences people are going to, because that also may inform mm -hmm. whether or not we'd be willing. And maybe it'd be actually, if you take 30 seconds and just write down the main conferences we're going to in the chat, we might see some alignment there and that may make it easier to have that discussion. What do you think, Matt? That sounds great. And honestly, if, if we could work together, Richard, <laughs> if yeah, that'd be great. Oh, yeah. Dane, yeah. Let's do this together. Yes, there should be one, not two. Yeah. <laughs> let's collaborate. That's mine at the moment, but if there's more and other people are going to conferences, could you could you list? I know some of you are going to FOSDEM, so that might be a good opportunity to have a dinner or a drink if you don't have the flu 
Um, and then because Faust and Fluke. And then some of you may be going to OspoCon. That's another one that's coming up. Um, I don't know of any other mate. There's the NS, the North American one. Yep, that's uh, what in there. Okay. It was, it's in April. Where is that? Seattle. Yeah, so, okay, that's the one I was thinking. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. Ospo, isn't OspoCon with it? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, I, I might go to that, but it depends on how many of you are there. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I probably won't go to that. <laughs> So, uh, Fosse, I will oh, Fosse. definitely yep. be at Fosse next next year. Um, Have they confirmed that they're doing Fosse next year? There's they named it Fosse. really, really clearly. Like the yearly there meant they're going to try again next year. And it's also the entire funding plan for Fosse. It's the whole point of Fosse. So they did the first one at a loss of the next one. They could do it to say we already have this thing. So if they yeah. don't have it, I'd be shocked. Okay. I feel yeah, like I haven't seen, there's nothing on the website. I keep looking every month or so to see if they've made any announcements and they've just been not, not a single thing I could find about it. I'll send a note to Karen. Yeah, to I feel like Steven sent a note to Karen at one point when I was standing next to him. And this might've been at the December meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got um, confirmation that it was happening, but they just didn't on the site yet. So, yeah. That it was happening. I think the same weekend. Yeah, it was the same weekend that it happened last year. And that's in July? Yeah, and it's in Portland. July and Portland. Okay. Portland in July is Sounds like a pretty good possible. candidate. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> would, would it be worth trying to secure some additional funds? to run our own workshop? If you're thinking about the funding sources that I normally think about, then yeah, we could probably do a combined one, Matt. Okay. And maybe that's something we should talk about offline. That yeah, sounds good could. to me. Yeah, let's let's do that. Cause we could think about travel support and venue yeah. support and those kinds of things just to make it convenient for people to come. PyCon US might also be good because I know Saeed may be there as well because it's in Pittsburgh, which is at CMU. Um, and it's not a long drive for me. So, Inessa, that would be a cool one. Okay. Are people, are people who maybe haven't participated on this call in open source conferences amenable to going to, like, Portland in July, <laughs> if you had money? <laughs> I am. I have a travel budget of three thousand dollars for All right. a year. <laughs> well, wow. we can we can help in any way. Okay, so Posse sounding pretty good at least. Yeah. Here. Okay. Great. Uh, Richard, you and I can connect. Out of there. Okay. Um, great. Thank you, everybody. Um, a couple. I just I wanted to bring up some highlights from last year, um, just to kind of focus uh, what we're working on and just so everybody kind of understands their things we've been developing over the year and things we might want to think about in 2024. Uh, so obviously the Sloan Foundation funded several new university OSPOs, many of you who are on this call. Yes, congratulations to everybody. And honestly, it's, you know, I was looking, it was interesting. I was, it seems like this has been going on for a long time, but looking back at a lot of the press releases, like I even looked at like the Wisconsin press release, I think it just came out in fall of, you know, 2023, a lot of them were July 2020. So these are still very recent and very new. I know that uh, certain universities were funded prior to that, but, and I think that the round was six universities uh, that came from, from Sloan. So that's great. So I think that was a, a big milestone. I think one of the things that I was thinking about just from a grant perspective, and we can talk about this a little bit later, is how you're all thinking about sustainability into the future beyond those two years, <laughs> which is the, the forever grant question. Because um, that might be helpful if we can all kind of think about that sustainability together instead of thinking about just, you know, one university trying to sustain their efforts, um, but doing it as a collective might give it power, which could be cool. We can talk about that later. Um, I also wanted to just point out a couple documents here. And these are things that we've been developing over the course of, of the last six months. So the first is, is a, 
one that I found kind of from a long time ago, which is just trying to set out a series of goals that might be useful for university uh, open source efforts. Um, and so what's articulated here is, is kind of leading up into those goals and how different groups might think about uh, open source at their different universities. So I'd just like to give you a minute to, to take a look at that. If you haven't, you can just click on the link here in the minutes. But I think really we focused around four different goals, which was resource excellence, education, research translation, and then community. And I know that every, I'll just say OSPO, every OSPO at these universities aren't necessarily always doing the same things. So what I tried to do was go back through the minutes and through our notes and capture the different things that people had brought forward. And those things being these one through eights. So I think the, from, for me, the, the real value here is that it could give footing for OSPOs that are just starting to think about how they might want to communicate the work that they're doing. Um, it may help focus uh, different things that you're working on. So anyway, that's that's this document here. Anybody have any comments on that or questions? All right. This is all, yeah, right. These are all things that y'all have made. Yeah, Claire. No, I I mean, it's fantastic. And, and um, it's great to always, you know, review exactly what we're doing. Uh, one, I suppose, overall comment um that that springs to mind he's not is looking through this um and based on what you were talking about in terms of you know thinking about how we all like kind of work together i suppose one, one of the things we should always keep in, in mind is that there are so many universities that don't have an ospo I, I i know we keep saying that but but this obviously um very important that what what we do here um that that's it's accessible for folks who don't have an ospo i just want to remind because this is an because there's a lot of representatives from OSPOs here, there's a there's a there's a I suppose a temptation to be talking about this as being useful for OSPOs, but of course I know that we want to make this more useful beyond that. Um, and then, um, I suppose one of the things that I've been thinking about recently um, is, is this idea of as we think about these metrics and and how we might, you know, how how we might measure progress, to think about that in in the context of what it takes to measure them. I suppose that's just a, this is just an aspect I've been thinking about recently that, you know, there are some things that one could measure, but would take someone like, you know, a full-time person, you know, a full year to, I, I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating here, but, but when we think about what it takes to measure something like that, you know, are, are there certain measurements that are easier to measure than others um, and things like that. So I, I suppose this, the, the the work it takes to measure something is something I've been thinking about recently, um, and I wonder is it is it a is it a lens on some of the things we discuss? Yep, completely fair. I've been thinking about measurement too, <laughs> just how hard some of the things we've talked about are to measure. So I mean, if you go down through this list, you could almost pick any of these sometimes, and they're just incredibly difficult to measure. Um, so I, that would be great to talk about that and how we go about thinking about that. All right, thanks, Claire. Um, the other the other link here is more of a, a kind of a graphic look at um, that document as well. And the intention here is to help us get down to those measurements. So I think that the document doesn't really hone us in on what those metrics or approaches could be to understand the things that are on that document. Uh, this is also meant to to provide perhaps some visuals for you all as you're talking about open source and the work that you're doing at your universities so that we could talk about it in a consistent way. So these are all free to use. So you'll see again, this research excellence, research translation, education, and community. Kind of here, I've spent quite a bit of time going through our conversations again from the minutes and trying to address the questions um, that could be answered in support of, say, research excellence, or the questions that could be answered in support of, say, education. I think we had some 
we had added a lot, we had moved a lot around, and I feel like some of the questions that were, say, related to education were actually ending up in the research excellence table, <laughs> or some of the questions that were related to research translation were showing up in the community table, or we had some repeated questions. So I've, I've worked to clean this up just a bit. The, I think it's always the, hard to classify by committee. Yeah, it just, it just took a little <laughs> bit of time to kind of work, work through it and clean it up. Um, so I, I really tried to not remove any of the content, just try to, to organize it in a bit bit of a better way. Um, Claire, to your point, I think, you know, these, I, I changed this to supporting approaches as opposed to metrics and metrics models, because I think some of these things that we want to answer or things that we might want to understand, uh, maybe just thinking about them in terms of a metric may not be the right way to do that. Um, and we can talk about what different universities are doing to try to answer some of these questions. So um, is there any, are there any comments on, on this document? So it's meant to be related to this document. This is more narrative. This is more visual uh, of the same thing. I have a comment. Yeah. Um, the, I talked to Saeed last week, um, and we were talking about the power that OSPOs could have together to make recommendations. And I'm wondering if that's something in the education, like we could divide and conquer different um, strategies for um, creating curriculum for, you know, like one university could focus on licensing, oh. another one could focus on, yeah. you know, other aspects of open practices. Um, so that we're not duplicating documentation. And then we could maybe, when we actually say like, we think these are the licenses that you should use for this, we could put that out there as a, almost a press release to amplify messages. Um, is that something you're talking about in education? Maybe I'm going completely off path. No, no, no. Um, we haven't. And that's a, we, we haven't talked about that, but like, if I look at this question right here, I don't know if you see that. Mm -hmm. well enough on my screen, but um, open source curriculum to support faculty, staff, and students, for example, is what mm -hmm. you're talking about. Um, and also talking about just having one of the universities maybe take that on as a shared resource for others. Is that right? Uh, that or just divide and conquer and, you know, different universities that have slightly different focuses do I'm I'm new to all this so hey, yeah. I'm learning about libguides and all these the different like you know a CMU has some really nice libguides I just kind of want to copy them I don't want to re redo them um and then there's you know do we do open ed you know x kind of open education is that what we're also talking about um so it about creating like education curriculum that is itself open sourced as like an artifact yeah certain that that could certainly be something um okay yeah undoubtedly um, i'm trying to think of kind of where that fits in this this model here um whether like that that might be so for example i might put that down i'm trying to think because i've just gone through this so here in community on P on slide nine, we have the support and creation of open artifacts and perhaps curriculum might be kind of more in line there. Yeah, Claire. Um, one, one thing, so one thing as I'm reading the document as well and, yeah. and thinking to, to David's point about how we can kind of come together, um, you know, no working working trying to advocate for ospos in universities as well as with ospos in universities like a lot of the time some of these questions and the ones in the document um pe people don't have the the kind of the the background the subtlety of what they mean like what's the scope of this question what why are we even thinking about this as a goal like why is mm -hmm. this important um and i'm just wondering if an elaboration. I mean, I hadn't thought about it before since until I saw your document as well as the actual um mm -hmm. questions, because I know we'd started with that document. But I'm I'm just conscious that we haven't actually elaborated on each of those questions as to why why it's there. Like as in, 
So why why might someone want to know what funding agencies have programs supporting open source work? But I mean, there's there's reasons why why, but 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 we're not elaborating on it there. And yep. and I, I'm wondering if that might be um something that would be helpful for people because I think having having a little short discussion about the context of why that point is in this document, um might be very helpful for people to understand just more about the context of 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 the scope of open source and universities um and 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 the reason one of the reasons why i'm thinking about this at the moment is because just back to your whole point about you know as people are trying to sustain their efforts and look at opportunities to do things oftentimes you're trying to justify this is why it's important um and for people who don't know the context if they read this list they wouldn't know what why these points are there um mm -hmm. whereas you know a kind of a a discussion of that can can sometimes be very helpful. I'm I'm thinking about this now based on your your conversation about why metrics and measurement isn't often the only thing that's important to communicate, right? So mm -hmm. the, the why we're measuring, the why we're interested in this part of this is is important as well, and 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 it's perhaps something we haven't captured. So we ha that's a good point. We haven't. So a couple couple notes here. So the the list that you're seeing here, Claire, like the one through nine. And then the one through four and all that kind of stuff. It's I have to admit these are kind of they're not great looking lists. <laughs> they were they were me just trying to move things around and capture things um, just to get them kind of broadly under the goal. And yeah. so I had kind of the, a similar reaction to when I would look at some of these things. They just they felt like just kind of tossing it in front of people with no real <laughs> no real bearing context. On, yeah, yeah, on what it was, and so. Um, Point well taken. I do think that maybe we could think about your the whys that you talk about, like why do these matter? More as perhaps you know a collection of these four things. Like why do you care about these four things? Maybe not doing it for every one of them. That might get a little wordy, but I, in those four, I don't know if those are the four that go together. But just like kind of organizing them in such a way that we can give a why story around those particular things and why they're related to research excellence as well. Exactly. Uh, and, and it's precisely, I mean, I remember some of the conversations that prompted these bullet points uh, and it's, it, it's just, I have a feeling people will be having these conversations over and over again, unless we actually, you know, articulate yep. detail about them. You know. Yep. No, I like that. Um, so that's like, I think it would also help in any discussion about supporting resources, because again, just a little bit more detail might prompt for some people what might actually help in terms of helping to answer that question. Great. I, sorry, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm remembering old conversations myself now from the last 12 months, but I'm thinking about the discussion around um, things like uh, the GitHub, um, uh, insights tool thing that we were we were looking at, and this how that might yeah thank you the innovation graph sorry yep. I forgot the word but how it might help in some circumstances but how there has to be a big caution sign over other circumstances and and again you know that that kind of subtlety around the fact that there are tools out there and they may be useful but only in certain contexts you know unless unless we document some of those things we might get carried away and you know it might be like you know here here's an item here's a tool let's mm -hmm. double click and focus on this tool but understanding its limitations and things there's a lot of yeah and, and that's fair too because like going through this list it's it is interesting when you go back over the course of like 12 months of conversation and try, try to bring it back together um it, you know like i wonder sometimes about the the most appropriate message for all of you in your university ospos like um like getting down at that to your point claire like on the the particular metric and a particular tool like just telling people use this tool to determine this metric to answer like sometimes that that may not be the best approach um it's very detailed <laughs> it really gets down into the weeds and it may not be the most useful thing for everybody on this call so I think these are points re really well taken. And I, I struggle with these myself a little bit. Um, do other people have comments based on kind of what we're talking about here, just in terms of these, these shared goals? 
as you've been uh as i've been walking around and having conversations i'm very um, aware of like what am i saying and what's resonating with other people um you know there's some just advocates that are supporters of open source and there's some people that just are what's open source <laughs> um that i'm finding at, at gw um so there there are like a few things that um i i i make it very clear that i'm not going to mandate they use any tool that's open source because i think that's a bad strategy um and faculty will just balk at those kind of things um and i'm i'm kind of one thing that seems to be resonating is saying the government is giving all this money for grants and they're starting to require open um data open you know the software be open and and available and open access so it's coming and if you want to win these grants and if you want to do the work you're going to need to know how to do it so that seems to be resonating um well but yeah i'm looking for any other strategies for the elevator pitch because i'm just going around trying to break through the silos right now and having fascinating conversations with so many people are you talking with students too like yeah absolutely yeah, okay. yeah but it's yeah it's it's like hello are you doing open source hello how can i help you i want to help you <laughs> Um, so what, actually one of the things that um, I was hoping to do, not on, on this call, uh, but, you know, on our next call in a couple of weeks is starting to have the, the reps from the different universities talk about what they're working on in 2024. So like, David, what you might be working on is just <laughs> trying to understand how open source lives. Um, in an organization and folks like at Santa Cruz, like what Stephanie's doing might be very different, right? And one of the things I think that might be really helpful just as well is, um, you know, giving giving you the, the floor as an example for 15 minutes, David, to talk about what, what you're doing at GW and what you're hoping to accomplish. And just, just letting people listen and then provide feedback as to whether or not they've run into this issue as well at their own universities and how they've worked to overcome those particular issues. I think that might be a, a really nice thing in 2024 that I've been thinking about as well. But one of my questions is, is, is for all of you is, is are there other, are there other places where you all meet as a, as a group of OSPO representatives? Or is this the place? Cause if this is, if this is one of the places, then we should probably have those talks. You know, if we're, if we're meeting regularly, and I know Richard's on here too, but if you're meeting regularly, like here, then we should probably spend time working to support each other as well, just on the challenges that we're having. Since I was called out by name, I just want to respond. Um, sure. I, I think we're talking tomorrow, um, Matt. And so we, just the two of us. And so maybe we could figure out a plan for this, but there's... Certainly the sustained academic working group is one place where people are meeting. That's not meant to be just OSPOs, but given that people at OSPOs have funds and money and, and interest, it ends up being people from open source university OSPOs, which is kind of funny. I see Stephanie smiling. Um, and so we definitely meet there and maybe it might make sense to talk about splitting up the same work so that that can be more of a general, here's, thoughts on stuff and this can be more of a here's metrics on stuff and they can mm -hmm. be complimentary okay. um because i was certainly also hoping to say like if you're new feel free to talk about your program uh, i think that's also a space for us so i think we're, we're we're basically doing half of the same work with with a third of the brain so we should probably just connect on that better. Well, we're like you said we're talking tomorrow so <laughs> yeah great it seems like a multiplier yeah. all right cool yeah cool. and I'll, I'll add in just because, again, for folks that may not be familiar with it. So there, there is, as part of that Sloan funding work that you referenced earlier, Matt, uh, for people yeah. to understand that there is, uh, there, there was an additional effort that Sloan funded to connect the, the OSPOs in universities specifically to meet up on a regular basis. So we also have that convening. That is a kind of a, a, a semi-closed uh, um, community in that you have to be in an OSPO to participate, that that was part of the 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 kind of the ask actually from folks that were participating in that to, to make sure that it was very focused on OSPO work. 
Um, but but that is also happening. Um, but and that that covers some of 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 the the kind of challenges that I think that that you've referenced us here in terms of these discussions. But our intent was always to to bring any learnings from that to the communities like Chaos and the Sustain okay. Academic Working Group, so that we are you know anything that's discussed is brought back to the broader community. But it's just to provide that additional space for people to talk about exactly what their current challenges are in that respect and um, okay. from an Aussie perspective. And the and that group is the the curious group, group so, yep. yeah, the community Folks. for university okay. and research institutions. Okay. Cool, thanks, Claire. Uh, Richard, Richard, is your hand up again, Stephanie? Yeah, I actually intentionally let Claire take that one, and I didn't mention it because I knew that she would do it better. And <laughs> um, Claire's the one running that group. There's other groups. There's a diversity group for sustain, which is meeting in two days. A sustain together group, which is in two days. Uh, and then there's the LF academic cosmology group. Um, and so just saying there's, there's a lot and we all know each other. And I think it's hilarious that half the people in this call were also on the previous call at 11 for the chaos diversity group. So yeah. Stephanie. And then of course there are all of us who are on the, uh, uh, tech transfer working group <laughs> that are also on this call. So I was just saying that I pull, uh, that one actually is specifically dealing with some of the questions we had about like licensing and other stuff, but in the, but bringing in more, not necessarily the OSPO folks, but the tech transfer folks that the OSPO folks will work with. So um, that one's, I think an interesting group. That one, I think it's getting, I think we're doing it once a month or something. Kendall, you're on that call, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm like, I start forgetting where I've seen people. I actually didn't know about the Ospology Academic Group. Uh, so I think I should read all of Anna's emails better. If so, you don't know, maybe there isn't one. Maybe I'm just messing things up. I just often see that there's an academic stuff that they're trying to do yeah. because LF wants to do everything in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They do. So but I, I get lost in the number of to-do group emails I get. So I'm like, <laughs> I, I might have missed that one. Uh, I also want to flag because, you know, we don't have enough groups is that, uh, right, but what's kind of cool is that we are now, of course, doing our own network within UC. So that has five other campuses. So I'm actually envisioning, hopefully, as we wrap up some proposal writing that we're doing this week, that I actually can start bringing in those folks. A lot of those folks are very energized as well. So you may actually see a bunch of UCs showing up to some other UCs showing up to these meetings as well. Uh, I see some chat going on, but I'm not following it. Um, Richard, is this part of the mapping that you're doing at Sustain? You know, it's going to be. Um, I'll write down the list of all these groups today. Uh, is there a place I could share that in the Chaos Slack, maybe? Yeah. Great. I'll do that today. To, we, yeah, at some point, we probably need to get this sorted out. So we need it not, now. Yeah, so that we're not having the same conversations in a variety of different places. and. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll I'll add a note on on this particular topic today, okay. and I'll post it in the same chat. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, well, as we are the chaos project, and our focus is on metrics. Um, yes, I mean, still the the goals always are question oriented, and then ultimately metric oriented, and how we get there. Um. I did want to mention. I should put curious in here. I did want to mention that there is from 2024, um, some software and data science work that is available to folks. And so we don't have this software work necessarily mapped to the particular questions yet. This is something we could work on in 2024. So there is a SaaS solution out there that uses chaos metrics, which is called Compass, which I will point out is currently hosted in China. Um, we're looking to, in 2024, perhaps get a, an instance of Compass hosted in the U.S. or uh, Europe. Uh, the idea here is that you can point Compass at particular communities that you would have an interest in and ask questions uh, about that community uh, through various chaos metrics and metrics models that have been deployed on the Compass site. So that's available for people to ask pretty pointed questions on particular communities that they might be interested in. It won't answer questions like, how do I talk about open source with folks at my university? But again, it's very, very focused on questions uh, for communities that you might care about. 
think Sean also put in there um, some other hosted instances with metrics.chaos.io and ai.chaos.io. Um, Sean, do you want to talk about those just a little bit? Yeah, you can go to, uh, if you go to metrics.chaos.io, it will, if you create an account, it'll take you over to the ai.chaos.io, which is the Augur instance. Let well, you create an account and then you can create repository groups and load repositories or GitHub organizations in there. Um, well, you can also add individual GitLab repositories. Um, and so this this will continue to be developed as well. The, the 8 knot front end is a dash plotly tool, which is a data science tool. And then Augur is a longstanding chaos project that's just really good at eating up data and uh, getting a lot of data. That's all. So yeah, that'll work. We'll be having the compass as well as this solution evolve over the course of the next year. Um, yeah, and I and, think the whole, oh, go ahead, John. And Enoch, Enoch, who has been working with us on the badging, um, is also going to be working with us on the compass SAS solution um, in 2024. From a technical perspective, yeah. So what I what I mean, I think we can talk about this <laughs> later as well. But one of the hopes would be is that um, as we say on here, start developing, say metrics or metrics models, that these can be somehow easily accessible for folks at universities. the The idea here is that um, we suspect that a lot of universities don't have the time or necessarily the resources to stand up their own instances of software, to ask questions about the communities that they care about. And that's what these SaaS solutions are meant to do. Is this like a competitor of Biturgia or Scarf? So uh, Biturgia, so Grimoire Lab, which Biturgia is based on, is an also a, it's also a chaos project. So and uh, Compass is based on Baturgia technologies. Yeah. So under under the hood of Compass is Grimoire Lab. I'll drop a link in the chat. We we've, we've tried to articulate some of the differences because they're they're I wouldn't say they're necessarily competitors. They're very different tools that do similar things, but in very different ways. So I'll I'll drop a link in the chat. Give you a little more insight into that. I think. Thank you, Don. Thanks. And then with Don's comment. I'd like to also say that that Dawn is uh, the director of data science here at the Chaos Project, and she has worked not not all the time. Um, everybody wants to to kind of look at uh, their community activities or the communities that they care about, kind of on these public instances, but they want to do it um, kind of in a more discreet way and and maybe in a more directed way than what could be provided through some of these SaaS solutions, and so. Don has worked with folks to to kind of give insight on the communities that they care about. And so if you if you have very particular questions around communities that you care about, I think Don, you might want to add a few comments here about how you work with folks and kind of the yeah. insights and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So so one of the things that I've I've done for a few different communities is I've got kind of a starter project health metrics model that uh just gathers like four metrics for a bunch of, you know, maybe for a set of repositories. And I can I can run that for for really sort of anybody who wants to run that on a contained set of repositories if you just want be some sort of a start and you want to better understand where to go from there it is just a start like it's it's really really basic but um but that's something that I'd be happy to do for people just reach out to me and let me let me know and let me know what orgs or repos you want to run it on and we can we can go from there um but also I am I am the chaos data science resource for you so if you have if you have questions just general questions about how to apply metrics in your situation, or you want to just brainstorm with somebody who's who's done this a lot. I'm I'm really kind of happy to meet with anybody if you want to just chat about metrics, if you want to talk about maybe what you're trying to do do and get some suggestions. So I'm yeah, I'm I'm a resource for you. So don't hesitate to reach out to me if you think I can help you in some way. And I'll I'll add that Don is 
been working with corporate open source program offices as well. And I think one of the hopes is these insight guides, which um, you want to talk a little bit about those, Don, before I... Yeah, sorry, I, I, did, I didn't mention the insight guides. It's It's one of the deliverables for the data science initiative is to put together some guides that help people generate insights using chaos metrics. Because historically, we've given people a pile of metrics, we've given people software and just said, go figure this out. Um, and what we found is that people don't always know, know what to do with that pile of metrics. So we've put together some some insight, or we're, we're in the process of putting together some insight guides that help people understand how they might interpret different types of metrics in their situation. Because metrics, you know, up and to the right is not always better for every type of community. There's there's nuance, there's interpretation. And so I'm in the process of writing some insight guides to help people navigate that that nuance within their community. Exactly. And as I get some of those, I'll I'll bring them into this group so that you can you can all see them for sure. I'm kind of starting with the OSPO working groups and some of those folks have been using these metrics for a long time. So I'm gonna start with some feedback from them and then bring something that's a little more polished into this group. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, David. Are there any concerns? This might be a really dumb question. Are there any concerns of like Big Brother um, tracking everybody from a university, all their open source projects and gathering the metrics on them? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um yeah yeah it's it's a problem. Um if you haven't read there's there's an ACM article written by some folks at uh Google and a few other places that's called Beyond the Repository and it talks about some of those challenges because people have historically used and I I mean used open source communities um as sort of test beds for things as um you know nameless faceless uh, you know, beings and, and not really thought about the impact that they're having on these communities by studying them. And then the privacy concerns are, are a big concern as well. I mean, when I worked at VMware, there were some, um, some companies doing some data gathering that we were deeply uncomfortable with about VMware employees being in those particular data sets in the way that they were using them. And so it's, um, it's something that Companies need to think about, universities need to think about, researchers really need to think about as they're, you know, putting together their their research and their data about open source projects. And I'll drop the link to that article in the minutes. Thanks. That's my soapbox. I'll step <laughs> off of it now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and then the the last piece of software that I just wanted to bring up is GitHub's innovation graph. So there was, we had a demonstration of it. Do you remember that? Back yeah, in? it was like in late October, early yeah. November, I think. So of the innovation graph. Are there universities, are there representatives here? Or any folks on this call that are using GitHub's innovation graph? I know that the University of Texas was. Okay. I, I to. <laughs> that's something that I yeah that I want to explore as well and okay what UT is doing especially yeah okay might be something that we just want to kind of like all the software or the work with Don like something that we just bring up regularly here in this in this group just right to understand what UT is doing and then Allison if you do something at Wisconsin like what what you're using it for and how it's helping you or didn't help you um, I think that'd be useful for everybody. So that'd be pretty cool. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and then the last thing, and I, we need to put Curious on here as well. I went back through um, our minutes over the last year and tried to take a look at the other kind of organizations or communities that came up a lot <laughs> that mm. were mentioned many times. So there are many, there are many, many, many. <laughs> if you go down through the minutes, you'll see so many different groups mentioned that that are working in the university or scientific scientific space or the research space um, but the ones that came up really really regularly were helios yep um sustain and and now curious and so i should if somebody could add curious in there for me that'd be great um so Said had worked a lot with helios and just how the metrics that we have could help things like the rpt process perhaps um but just really trying to to 
to foster that relationship. And my, my suggestion here is that over the course of 2024, we really work to build a select set of relationships. Other folks can always join, but um, yeah, so I don't, who, who's- I did that. I really think research should have been there. So that's the Research Software Alliance, which deals with research yeah. software at universities. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think we've, um, I agree with you. It, it, it's an area of overlap with the scientific and research software group and that's okay. Like it's the, the lines are never going to be perfect. Okay. Right? So it doesn't have to be in here. I'm just there. like, I, I think it does one. belong in here. I just, I just want to point out there will be this overlap on the Venn diagram. Okay. And cool. Risa is probably one of those ones that overlaps. So is this, so this is um, what I was Focusing on here is like where we would spend our effort. So as we are say developing metrics or developing these goals, like who do we spend the time talking to? And is is Risa one of those? And if you think it is, that's totally cool. It's not just meant to be, these are other folks working in this area. Got it. They're not well resourced enough. So I'll just remove that for now. Okay. Um, feel free to add anything <laughs> right for, for real. It's just, um, yeah. So anyway, that's that. Okay. Um, so thank you for kind of hearing me out over the course of the last 40 minutes. I, I just wanted to highlight the things that had happened over 2023. So from, from funding the OSPOs here to the things that we have developed through these goals, ultimately getting to the metrics, it sounds like we have some work to do, Richard, just in terms of identifying the different groups that are working in this space so that we're not overlapping where we don't need to overlap and working together where we can work together. Uh, there's a lot of software that's starting to, to emerge out there and with Don being available as the director of data science, um, as well as the GitHub innovation graph. So I think these are things we should keep our eyes on over 2024 as well. And then thinking about how the work that comes out of here could inform uh, other groups as well. Does anybody think I'm missing anything? There's a lot of stuff, but it's pretty good, pretty good collection, I think, that we've worked on for six months. You can all just believe me too. You can go through the minutes. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think. I don't, I don't mean to be rude and this is on me and this is about, this is about me. Uh, I think I need to do more work making sure that we don't have to have another one of these calls over and over again, because I've had this call a lot, which is like, what's in the space? What is the space? Yeah. And so that's actually my bad because I'm supposed to be working on a thing for that. But uh, hopefully we can get the organizers together and just sort of divvy up what we're doing in the next few months. I'm not sure any of us is that organized, but that's something which we can be at least mad. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, this was in part defining the space. It was also trying to highlight what we've actually accomplished over the course of 2023. Which is awesome. Yeah, so this is, I don't think there's anything new here in terms of what we did in 2023. It's just to bring it back forward. Honestly, when you kind of go through the minutes, sometimes there's a, a lot of repeat in the minutes. Um, so this is just trying to synthesize that all down for people. So, But I think the the categorization work that you did is extremely helpful to draw all this large you know hundreds of pages 100 pages of content into something readable i was trying to do thank you <laughs> sure and it gives us points to, to talk about i think this helps us kind of frame agenda items as we move forward in 2024 um, particularly on, on the metric side of things so okay so thanks everybody that was it's a lot but <laughs> I think there are a lot of good ideas here um, and we'll see you, gosh, in two weeks. I'll see you a couple of you next week as we do the podcast. Yeah. So take care. Yeah. Take care. Bye everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye everyone.